Valkyria Revolution on the Xbox One. Let's finish what, uh, this quest we were trying to start. We got past this boss. I don't even remember his name anymore. I'll just check out the video. It's been 24 hours since I played this game. So I'm about to finish up this level and possibly this game because it's not going well, kids. This might end up being a, this might end up being a uh, YTF if things don't go as I... If things go as poorly as I fear, this will not go well. It's been two and a half hours since I started playing this game. I want to say it's been two hours if you discount all of the cutscenes I endured. This isn't going to go well. Oh yeah, these are the social circles that are in the town. Alright, so let's finish this up. What squad do I want? Uh, squad, squad menu, not that menu. Select team. Uh, Helena. So I want two shock troopers, and she's one of them. Let's see. Bloom. Stephen J. Bloom. Sapper. He's my healer. Daryl is another. So I have three shock troopers. That should be more than enough. They're uh, heavy hitters. That's why I use them. Okay, so uh, let's deploy. We've gotten, gotten us this far. I think we'll be fine. So, unfortunately, I, I was afraid this was actually going to be a permanent thing once I saw the tutorial area. This is a bunch of Dynasty Warriors crap. It's not even good Dynasty Warriors. It's like PS2 level Dynasty Warriors. Like Dynasty Warriors 3, basically. And that's incredibly discouraging. To know a game like this is basically doing Dynasty Warriors like bad Dynasty Warriors like combat. Because what you're seeing here, let me vault over this, is... No more sophisticated than Dynasty Warriors 2, or excuse me, Dynasty Warriors 3, I want to say, because I've definitely played that game. And that game had a, like, a, like a map screen, you had to make tactical decisions every now and then, so you can figure out, you know, what group, what mob, what captain to attack first, in what order. You know, there were decisions like that you had to make. This feels more like a brawler, where you're just going from point A to point B, and you're... Maybe you're occasionally making decisions to go after a commander first, like I just did. Like, I took out that tank. I'll take out the archers first. But these regular enemies aren't that strong. I just, I just beat the whole mission, huh? Wow. That was way easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, I just defeated the boss anyway, so having an epilogue like this feels kind of weird. Because <laughs> I just already, already took... That boss took me, like, 15 minutes to beat, right? And then I just come over here and I take down that you know, that at at walker in like 30 seconds and I complete the mission. I mean, it feels kind of anticlimactic, don't you think? And how much would it suck if I ended up defeating that really hard boss and then just dying to these guys? <laughs> that would definitely suck. Okay, I took Spinning Blaze for some reason. I probably shouldn't have done that. So, that's one of the main... This, what you just saw right there, is one of the main problems I have with the game, is that it throws me into these little arenas where I have to just do this over-simplistic Dynasty Warriors-like combat, and it's not, not even any combos, really. It's just, you know, mash on this A button for attacking, and then occasionally press the, I think it's the X button for that little special attack window, that battle palette. It's not great. And I'll probably put up some video showing these uh, cutscenes a bit later, because they're terrible. The animation's terrible. Every character has like two or three poses that they're constantly holding. And they don't hold it. They're like, they're on, they're on this two second, three second animation cycle. And they only, like I said, they only have three or four poses in that cycle. And occasionally they'll turn their head and their body to the, le to, to the left or right so they can talk to another character. And they'll hold the same pose for like two or three seconds in the same canned animation cycle. It's really, it's like, this is, nice, this is like PS2 era stuff. Which, in and of itself, isn't a problem. It's just that it's, it's at the service of a story that's not particularly well written. I mean, I mean, we're not even. I mean, I'm, we're, we're beyond the. We're beyond you know generic 1990s anime trope stuff here. I mean, this is this is literally like bad, bad shonen shujo level stuff. So. The fact that you might get a few games critics saying things like, oh, this is a brilliant story about the horrors of war and childhood. No. This isn't even... This, this is barely any... This, is, this isn't even rise to the level of Gunslinger Girls, and that's saying something. Because I've seen Gunslinger Girls. This is not, you know, Grave of the Firefly stuff we're talking about here. This is basically cosplay. Cosplay drama. It's not, and it's not even particularly sophisticated drama. 
that we're talking about here. So let's not let's not oversell things. This is a mediocre this is a mediocre story with very generic characters and very weak, extremely unimpressive dialogue. I like the fact that they try to make it an ensemble, but unfortunately, eh, they don't do a very good job of making the characters within that ensemble interesting. This isn't like a G.I. Joe situation where you have like groups of three or four people who seem to hang out together a lot, like Quick Kick and Alpine and Bazooka. They don't do that here. It's mainly just meh. Tropes bouncing off each other. You know, generic, st generic anime stereotypes bouncing off each other. Not going to defend that. And I'll just show you this book here for a second, because this will this is gonna this is why I've been skipping all the cutscenes, because I can go back and watch them any time. Like I said, and you probably saw my earlier videos. These things are interminable. Even if you skip them, the loading screens are maybe like 10 or 15 seconds long. In fact, the way it works is that you press this button to go to a cutscene. Then you wait 10, then you wait 30, you wait 15, 20 seconds for the loading screen to stop. And then you press a button so you can skip. So, you, so once, the, once, the, once the movie loads, you have to wait 10 minutes before you can skip it. Then you wait 15 more seconds for the load screen to disappear. Then you have to wait 10 more, minute, 10 more seconds after the movie starts to skip past the next cutscene. So if you're like me and you're skipping cutscenes, you're waiting like a minute, a minute and a half just to get through loading screens where you can get to the part where you can start, you know, managing your characters and visiting the towns and talking to people and doing all, or just going into combat, basically doing all the important stuff as far as this game's mechanics are concerned. So if you aren't, if you like me and you don't like this school story, you can't skip it that easily. You have to sit through a bunch of loading screens just to get to a point where you can continue the game. So let me get off of this screen. That's going to just make my point for me. So again, the filler here in this game is very bad, and it really hurts the pacing. If you like the story, or let's just say, if you're in this game for the story, the English voice acting isn't that bad. So I'll say that in the game's favor, but the dialogue isn't good. So if you're reading the subtitles and you're listening in Japanese, you're basically getting, like I said, generic you know, anime tropes, and you're not getting very good, well-defined characters. You're just getting regurgitations of poor... You're basically, you're getting poor iteration. You're getting poor iterations of very tired anime stereotypes. If you've seen five anime in the last decade, you've seen every single one of one of these types of characters, in some form or another, and they're not good versions of those characters. They're not given interplay that's worth following. So it's just it's every mediocre anime you've ever seen. I haven't seen Atalia. Maybe it's like I don't know. It's every mediocre anime you've ever seen. So unfortunately, that's not good enough. And I wish I could be less negative about it, but I'm sorry. I've been playing. I've been playing. I've been playing good. I've been watching good anime and playing good video games for 40 years. I see no reason to watch this. So I'm sorry. I'm over it by now. But again, if so, if you don't want to, so, and again, we're not even talking about you know well animated, well drawn, you know 3D poly polygonal anime characters here. I mean, this, I mean, this is, this, like I said, this is PS2 era stuff. I mean, and I'm, I'm not going to bring up stuff like Gal Gun, but let's just say, compare the models in this game to, say, Gal Gun. Just, the, just, just, just how, just compare the quality of the modeling in a game like Gal Gun to a game like this. This game looks a little bit better, it's a little bit cleaner than a game like Sumeria, for instance. And I love the Valkyrie, I love Valkyrie Profile Sumeria. But the story isn't good, the characters aren't good, the pacing is terrible. It has the same pacing as this game in a way. It's, you know, characters sit, basically sitting around, you know, mulling around, occasionally do, becoming exposition dumps, and having really stilted dialogue, and the music isn't well, isn't well integrated with the dialogue. It's just a music bed, usually, because that's what a lot of these games do. It's a music bed. But the choice of music usually isn't very good. It's usually at odd with. It's, it's sometimes it's at odd with the tone of the discussion because you'll have you know comic relief characters who are having conversations with more conventional characters who are having conversations with you know sticks in the mud, 
and the tone is always shifting because every character is basically a trope that's supposed to attract a certain kind of anime fan, I guess. And so, but again, if you aren't able to get a grip on the tone and the pacing and the dialogue in a way that make, that helps the story, then you're just, this it's just a waste of time. So it's not a well-told story. I'm not going to defend it in any way. So if you're like me and you're skipping, you're doing what I'm doing right now. Is you're just waiting to get past all these loading screens. So you can time me. From the moment I ended that battle, and if I were to cut all of the filler converse, if I were to cut all of my commentary and just focus on the loading screens, how long would that take? I might need a stopwatch. You can go back to my last video and look at the time taken between the end of one scene, the end of the loading screen, the skip event button that you just saw right here, the skip event prompt, and the next opportunity that I have to explore a town or go to the HQ or do the party management stuff, the inventory management stuff. You saw me. I didn't need to buy any new gear. I didn't need to buy any armor. I didn't need to tailor any special armor. And I, I, I did a bit of, you know, min-maxing with my characters in the free training mode just to see how the combat worked. Well, why even bother min-maxing these guys if the only... I mean, I'm making them stronger so that they don't die too easily in combat. But as soon as I get into combat, I'm just pressing... I'm just telling them all to attack. And I'm pressing the A button over and over again. So that, that's a problem. Because there doesn't seem to be a reason for me to invest in any of these other mechanics, like, you know, building up my characters, if all I'm going to do is just press the attack button over and over again. I'm not going to... And maybe I'll, you know, pick a different skill for my battle palette, but I'm only going to use that battle palette against bosses. I'm not going to use it against trash mobs, because they're easy for me to defeat using regular... I can't skip this. Using regular attacks. So why use my battle palette at all? And then once I get to a boss, I just, you know, go into the battle palette once in a while and see which attack is the strongest. But of course, as you saw me against that other boss, you know, maybe the battle was twice as long as it should have been because I didn't know what skills to use against them, but I was still able to beat them. And I wasn't really in danger because I had a healer with me. So maybe I shouldn't have brought the healer with me. I mean, I guess that was a meaningful decision that I made, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a, a difficult decision. I mean, I'm not asking this game to be XCOM. <laughs> I'm just asking it to I'm just asking it to encourage me to make a decision that might make me give some thought in terms of what who I should bring into a battle. Make me choose, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe okay, I won't use XCOM as an example. But if I'm playing Final Fantasy Tactics, make me choose between bringing a knight, you know, who can who can wear heavy armor and break enemy equipment versus a chemist who can throw potions versus a white mage who can't really attack anybody but has like you know cure spells or monks who I want to build up because they don't because they can you know punch people and heal people so they can attack barehanded and they can you know heal people so that's great archers maybe I should use archers because they can attack people without getting attacked themselves they can throw rocks and not face retaliation Again, encourage me to make those decisions. Give me options that are meaningful. And in the case of Final Fantasy Tactics, if you make wrong decisions in that game, you will get killed. I have a bunch of videos of Final Fantasy Tactics where I get killed on several of those videos because I chose the wrong party, or I chose the wrong tactics, or I used the wrong skill at the wrong time, and it cost me because it meant I was too weak to survive the fight. So I had to make those decisions, and the game punished me for it. But at that, I but 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 the game wasn't the game wasn't overbearing in that challenge. It wasn't unfair in that challenge. I died because I knew I made a risky decision, and and I didn't see it through properly. I didn't have a backup plan that was that was actually going to help me. In this game, I'm just pressing the attack button over and over again. So it's Dynasty Warriors, but it's not Dynasty Warriors like the PSP game. I can't skip this. The PSP version, now I can. In the PSP version of Dynasty Warriors, you, made this, you would constantly lose because it wasn't really clear 
where which way you needed to go. It wasn't immediately clear what path you needed to take to succeed. In you know in the regular Dynasty Warriors games that I played, it's not as hard, but you still have to make sure you're making the right decisions. It's not a brawler like this. We're really just going from point A to point B, clearing out whatever mob is there, then moving on to point C, etc. and so forth till you get to a boss. Because that's what that's a, that's Sengoku, that's Sengoku Basara, I think it's called. There was a Wii game. I think it was called Sengoku Basara. I don't remember what it was called. It was basically a Dynasty Warriors clone with anime characters. And it wasn't very, I don't remember it being very good. Because I think at some point people got the idea that, I can't skip this. At some point people got the idea that Dynasty Warriors games were just brawlers. You know, they were basically just you against 50 people in a, in a screen and that's what you did all day. That was, gun, that, was, that was Dynasty Warriors Gundam actually for me. I did a video on that where it was like, yeah, walk into this mob, kill everyone, go to another mob, kill them. And eventually you'll come across a captain and defeat them and that's part of your goal. The game will tell you where to go next. It was a brawler. Dynasty Warriors tried to encourage some strategic elements later on. I think it was like number four. I think number four or number five did that. That's when they really started doing that. And apparently the strategy mattered in those games. And I'm wasting a lot of time ranting because the game isn't letting me do anything. How long has it been since I ended that last fight? I defeated, I completed that mission. When can I finally get back to actually managing my party, doing all the other stuff in this game I actually might want to do? Because I'm not, the story's not doing it for me anymore. Maybe when I'm done recording, I'll go back and watch some of those cutscenes to see if the story gets any better. Like, before I go to bed, I'm sure it'll lull me to sleep. I mean, Lord, I mean, I could be watching Nadia, right? I, should, I could be watching Nadia Secret of the Blue Water right now. It's a, it's a better story than this. I could be watching, what's that other, what's that other anime I got? Uh, not Nadia. Add another anime around here. Yeah, I can watch. I can go back to watching Michiko and Hatchling. It's it's on the Funimation channel. I can watch that. So, it's been 17 minutes. So I started this video, and 15 minutes after I ended the combat, I can finally get back to doing something in this game. I'm astonished at how poorly paced this is. I'm astonished at this this. This might have, I guess maybe this was a Vita maybe this was a Vita game that they decided not to release. I, I can check on that because I, I know remember. Valkyria Chronicles 2 was a PSP game that, you know, at least they were trying, you know. They they conceded let me go back let me leave this place. I, I, I think they conceded that the the, the uh, stages, the missions had to be smaller. I think they conceded the number of characters in the mission had to be smaller. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you remember XCOM Enemy Unknown, I have to go here. Okay. If you remember XCOM Enemy Unknown, actually, let me, uh, let me go to headquarters so I can see if I can pick another fight. Because in XCOM Enemy Unknown, one of the important parts of that game, one of the important decisions they made was, okay, there are fewer soldiers in a party. The screens are, sm you know, the, the battle areas are smaller. There are fewer enemies in an area. But the idea is that because everything is more tightly packed, all of your decisions are more meaningful because you're not spending you know, five minutes wandering around looking for an, a hidden enemy to appear on the map. You're basically spending 30 or, 30 or 40 seconds creeping up to an alien and then you know, waiting to see what other mobs get triggered by your presence. So by making everything more dense, they actually made the game tighter and arguably better because every action was more meaningful. Maybe. I reserve judgment because I want to play the original XCOM someday. I was talking about Enemy Unknown, the reboot, is apparently the difference they made. There were smaller areas, but the areas were more dense, so your content was more meaningful, your confrontations were more meaningful, because they were in tighter spaces. Instead of fighting in a football field, you fought inside a basketball arena, I suppose. You fought inside a bath. You fought inside a tennis court instead of in a football field, and that's perfectly fine for me. You fight in a hockey rink instead of inside a, a soccer stadium. Okay, uh, enemies fell by fire alchemy. Let's claim that. Again, I didn't do any of that. That was me. I brought a magician, you know, a sapper, into my party. I told everyone in my party to just go on the offensive, and they would just randomly spit out fire attacks. And that's how I got that achievement. Water alchemy. So if someone had a water spell, so I guess they did one of those. I need to do nine more of those. I'm not going to be playing the game for that long. 
Annihilation missions completed. I haven't done any yet. Alright. So I guess we're done with that. No shards! Fine. I'm not even worried. Do I need shards? Maybe I'll need them later. I don't know. So I'll do one more fight. Probably gonna run out of time on this video, right? I got 18 minutes, so. so probably one of those videos. Okay, uh, level three, level three, level three. No story missions, which is fine. Uh, special training, so you can just fight your own. We already did a video like this where I just fought the other guys. Route enemy forces, route a light tank. We already took on a tank, so let's do a cleanup. By the way, the light tanks are the two-legged bi or the bipedal tanks. You know, the at the ATST walkers from Star Wars. Well, they aren't as tall, obviously, but you know it is. You know the the mini ostriches. Actually, I think they're yeah they're like they're like supersized ostriches, I guess. Skip the event. This might be easy. It might just be walking into a map and just killing a bunch of dudes. Okay, I can't really... Do, I can die here, but I'm not worried about it. So let's pick someone else. Amleth is overpowered, so I'll pick somebody else. I want to... Let me pick a scout this time. The our fencer uh, princess. Our reluctant warrior princess. A, re a reluctant warrior woman. Uh, reluctant warrior princess. <laughs> Boy, is that a trope or what? Okay. I, I, what are shields for? I mean, I guess they might be useful against some enemies. I just, whatever. Uh, let's see, uh, where's my other shock? Well, I have two more shock troopers. Yeah, Daryl's a shock trooper. Do I, I don't have any more shock troopers? I don't have any low-level shock troopers. Okay, Helena's a shock trooper, so let's bring in... Who have a level 6? I don't have any more level 6. I guess everyone went up. Well, let's bring a couple... Let's bring another scout, then. Let's bring him up to level 7. So I'm min-maxing. No, it is. I guess. Do I have any other sappers? I got Sarah. I guess bring the blonde, ditzy blonde in here. But she's not a ditch. She's just informal. Fine. Whatever trope that is. Who was that, um, the blonde in, um... Was that who that was? She was a blonde in Read or Die, the TV show? Yeah, same principle, I guess. Yeah, you know, where's a midriff, you know? Uh... I don't want to use these shield characters. Okay, so I guess Daryl will be the shock trooper... Isaac will be the scout. I'm a scout too, as Ophelia, and Sarah can be our healer. That'll be fine. She says best distance. She's basically Kelly Bundy from Married with Children. So that's all you need to know. Uh, what's the map? So we start there, and we need to attack. We need to get those two captains. I guess there are two captains over there. Shouldn't be a problem. They got this place cordoned off with the barriers, but that's okay. Again, I don't even know if that matters. Get rid of that. Squad menu. Okay, we've already... St gear? Do I even need to worry about gear? I mean, if I need it, I'll switch. If I die, I guess I'll switch. But this is supposed to be a level 3 mission. This shouldn't be a problem. Alright, let's do this already. Remember, I'm an otaku in training. I have no problem with anime. And I have no problem with old school anime tropes. Lord knows I grew up with them. But... I need good storytelling. So, give me something. Anything. Just don't give me this. So, I was hoping the combat would make up for it, because Lord knows there have been plenty of good video games from Japan with lousy stories. But, it takes too long to skip the stories and get to the good stuff, and that's unfortunate. Okay, let's bring out the 100-hand slap. I'm going to mash on the A button, and don't sass me, or so help me, I will mash this A button. Because that's the combat in a nutshell. If anyone attacks me, I mash on the A button and solve my problems. Because that's all I need to do. Okay, you're the commanders. Still fearing the enemy. It doesn't matter. It's just a rant. I mean, I guess... I, like, I, apparently the game says that some weapons trigger certain conditions and buffs and debuffs. But it's meaningless for the most part. Because I don't need to worry about those buffs and debuffs. I mean, I was playing... Agents of Mayhem, you know, I did, I did like a, like three dozen videos on Agents of Mayhem. And the buffs and debuffs in that game matter because when you choose certain characters and you equip certain gear and you use certain weapons, what happens in that game, what the deuce? What happens in this game, your eyes is getting killed. What happens in uh, Agents of Mayhem is that when you choose certain characters, 
and you only have a party, you have a party of three, but you only use one at a time, you switch between them, like in Castlevania 3. But what happens is, you'll have characters that have different buffs and debuffs, depending on the items they've equipped and the skills they use. So if you're, you know, if you're that big snowman dude, Yeti, he's got unlimited ammo, but he also freezes enemies, and eventually, if you hold down the, uh, the gun, the fire button, the, you know, the ice button, if you hold down that button, eventually his gun freezes over, and then when the gun freezes over, um, any frozen enemies can be shattered with a super melee attack. I mean, that's great stuff. That's a great application of a non-traditional, you know, skill system. Because you're buffing your character with the uh, ability to freeze enemies. And sometimes you can immobilize them. Like, you, like um, the same skill, like I said, that skill where you shatter enemies that are frozen... When your gun is frozen, you have certain skills. Let me... Uh-oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, hold on. I need a healer. Where's my healer? But I, got to, I forgot to tell everyone to go on offense. I gotta press the right button to... Gotta press right around the D-pad to tell people to go on offense. Let me get out of here. I gotta get out of here. I'm running. I'm running. Okay, I think I healed myself. Alright. Uh, where do I hide? Yeah, I need to hide behind one of these sandbags. Okay, get out of my way. This is my sandbag. And these guys. Okay, I'm getting healed somehow. I don't know how. Okay, they were good. So I can crouch here? Okay, someone's gonna die. Okay, enough. Okay, no one's dead yet. Where's my healer? Yo, I brought you along for a reason, people. Heal me. Fusillade, fusillade. I'm pressing the A button to dodge roll, basically. Okay, this dude is afraid, apparently. Yeah, this, ro this robot dude is running. He wasn't running away. I guess he was just trying to charge us. Okay, I'll worry about the commander later. Okay, allies afflicted with fear. We'll get to that. Quake with fear. Okay, I lost the healer. Where's my healer? There it is. Get in my healing circle. I want my healing circle. Thank you. Okay, let's get back to business. Okay, bring him down. I'm not going to use a special attack. I'm just going to use my regular attack button. Okay, whoop. Fusillade. Okay, we're good. Okay, I got impaired for some reason. This thing's going to die pretty soon, isn't it? Where's the fusillade? I guess I wasn't paying attention. There it is. Sometimes the aiming isn't great. Okay, um... I lost, uh, still fearing the enemy. Well, hold on to that. Okay, where's the commander? There he is. No, oh, wait, there we go. I'm coming for you. You people got lousy aim. All right. We good? We good. Okay, so we won. I'm happy. Eliminate all the enemies. Can I leave now? Is there anything here I need to pick up? Yeah, that's right. I probably need to pick up some uh, treasure chests. So I guess this will, this will be an excuse for me to end the video. Because I got distracted by a bunch of side stuff. But yeah, Ages of Mayhem was a game where it's like, okay. You got, let's say you have a gun that overheats. Well, what can you do now? Well, you have a special attack that only, that only can be triggered when the gun overheats. Okay. Is it an attack that immobilizes enemies? An attack that um, causes panic in them? Or can you just... Um, prevent them from attacking. Like, can you freeze, can, like, can you, uh, basically, can you keep them from moving? Can you keep them from attacking? Or can you just make them panic and start to run around like idiots? And depending on certain situations, that matters, you know? The buffs and debuffs matter in that game. In this game, eh, you just mash the attack button and eventually you get what you need. There's this guy just sitting around here by himself. Now the mission's complete. <laughs> I don't think I found any treasure chests. That was a problem. So I could have gotten an A ranking, but I guess I was wasting a bunch of time. Well, an A ranking in time, anyway. So this was just a mo this is just a bug hunt. <laughs> Whatever. Clean up hostels and all that nonsense. So this is terribly easy. It's it's not it's not demanding, but so it might be a cute little like knockabout game. I don't know what priorities are. Devise the priority. Devise the priority. I have no idea what that means. 
I guess this is like maybe a knockaround game where it's like, okay, you can play Dragon Quest Heroes, you can play Hyrule Warriors, you can play a Dynasty Warriors game, you can play Dynasty Warriors Gundam, you know, you can play uh, that Berserk game, I guess, which is like Dynasty Warriors. But this isn't even on that level. So I guess it gives you more stuff to do in between these fights, but, you know, it's just, no. I'm terribly disappointed. I I do want to go back and make a video for Valkyria Chronicles, and that'll be my excuse to whine about this game some more and go back to explain why the first game is the one you need to play. And I want to say that... What's the other game? Uh, I, want to, I, I didn't get a chance to listen to the music. I'll go back over these videos to see if the music's any good. Uh, Toshi Sakamoto Bias. I, I, I think he did the soundtrack. I'll just double-check. But Hitoshi Sakamoto's done good music and terrible games before, so this wouldn't be the first, the fifth, or the tenth time that's happened. So, in conclusion, no Nunca Hamas. Stay away from this game. If you can rent it or you can get it for like less than $5, and you're curious about it, I'd recommend it for that. 